New data shows criminals break into 55 cars every single day in San Francisco, but a new strategy by police is bringing that number down. Good evening, I'm Ama Dates. And I'm Dan Ashley. Thanks for joining us. Here are the latest pictures viewers have sent to the ABC 7 News I team of car burglaries that they spotted or in some cases suffered themselves. SFPD says the number of car break-ins is down 5% from the same time last year, and they credit the use of bait cars. Yeah, and the I team's Dan Noyes is here with more on the first arrest uh, in this latest bait car campaign. Dan. Well, Dan and Ama, police sources tell me any arrest using the bait car will have a big impact that one criminal typically breaks into several cars in a single day. But you're about to see even with an arrest, sometimes it's not long before they're back on the street. This couple from Indiana won't be coming back to San Francisco anytime soon. It's just sad. It's sad to see what used to be a beautiful city come to this. Dan and Linda Oligus were headed to a wedding in Sonoma County last month, but they stopped to tour Alcatraz prison. And you saw Alcatraz? How was it? It was awesome. Fabulous. We're in a great mood after we saw there Alcatraz. You, I mean, that, you need was... to open it up again. <laughs> you kidding. could use it for something. <laughs> they left the tour boat and walked across the Embarcadero to this parking lot. They thought their luggage would be safe in the rental car. But they joined the 15,357 other people who have had their cars broken into so far this year in San Francisco. They lost cash, a $1,200 iPad, and a $3,500 laptop. The police left a note telling the couple to come to Central Station. They had recovered their luggage. But they basically told us that, you know, is there a chance for us getting our computers back? And they said, no, uh, your, your computer will probably end up in either Vietnam or another Asian country. That happened on a Friday. Just three days later, the iPad pinged this location in Vietnam, 8,836 miles away. And that laptop containing Linda's work as a photographer was long gone. I thought I was going to hyperventilate. He was probably the strong one in this case because I, I, you know, I mean, it was just devastating for me. Police say they caught the man responsible for the Oligesis break in, 26 year old Robert Sanza of San Francisco. The criminal complaint alleges on that day, September 1st, he broke into the couple's rental car, another rental car, and a San Francisco Police Department bait car. They may be breaking into cars that are put out there by the San Francisco Police Department. The police chief announced the new bait car campaign the week before Sanza's arrest. I was there in court last week when he pled not guilty and set a trial date, and I've been researching Sansa's court records in several counties. Over the past five years, Sansa has been arrested more than a dozen times. He has convictions for car burglary, grand theft, hit and run, shoplifting, and more. He was on probation at the time he's accused of breaking into the Oligesis rental car. Robert Sansa has also been accused of evading arrest on several occasions, trying to drive away, but slamming into cars, causing injury, and putting anyone on those streets in danger. February 2nd of last year, police responded to the Japantown garage for a report of an auto burglary. Officers tried to detain Sansa as the suspect, but he fled, got in his car, ran over an officer's foot, and hit a parked car. Less than three months later, court records show the police tried to arrest him in North Beach. He was driving a stolen vehicle reportedly used in multiple car break-ins that day. The police sort of trapped him. This is a one-way street. He, they trapped him down there. Neighbors watched as Sansa hit the two patrol cars, drove onto the sidewalk, and took out this staircase. And suddenly the whole house starts shaking, and my wife starts yelling, someone just hit your Vespa. His Vespa was destroyed. He had to replace it. The complaint says Sansa hit another patrol car a block away, injuring an officer. Sideswiped another house. He made it to Columbus and Broadway, where he hit a civilian's car, injuring them. He left the car and ran into Chinatown, where officers finally arrested him. At first, prosecutors charged Sansa with several counts of assault upon a peace officer with a deadly weapon, hit and run, evading an officer with willful disregard, and a misdemeanor, possession of burglar tools. In a plea deal, all the charges got dismissed, except for a single count of evading an officer. I am pissed, pissed. There's no way a person doing all of that damage should be let off with just evading. Sansa got out with time served in that case, a little over six months in jail. 
The police union president tells me deals like the one Sansa got do little to prevent future crimes. Why is it that, you know, we continue to give, I guess, breaks and passes to people who just really are just showing they do not want to do the right thing. At that same news conference announcing the bait car campaign, District Attorney Brooke Jenkins promised to prosecute car break-ins more aggressively. That's what we are trying to reinstill in San Francisco right now, is that not only will you be caught, but when you are prosecuted, there will be a consequence for that behavior. That's a start for Dan and Linda Oligas. Does it mean anything at all that the police were able to catch your guy with their bait car? It worked. I mean, their their law enforcement technique worked. It does, but then, you know, let's see what happens to this guy. Because, you know, it wasn't his first rodeo. You know it's a professional job. What are they going to do, slap him on the wrist and let him out in a couple of months? Robert Sanzo's public defender declined to discuss his current case or the previous ones. His trial is set for November 17th, and I'll be there to follow up.